Welcome to the 700 Club Canada. It's a beautiful day and we're glad you joined us today. Lori, one of the things that we realized about COVID-19, and I know it seems like it's grabbing all the top headlines, is when we think we're in control, we got to think again because we're out of control, but God is still in control. You're right. Control is only an illusion, right, Brian? Have you heard that saying before? <laughs> I got a story for you where I thought it was in control. You ready for this? We were re Pray tell. <laughs> we were at the lake putting a new, uh, making an old dock kind of new, you know, like anyway, using up some old lumber and we were resurfacing this dock and I even got to use a drill. I was so proud of myself and I was helping my husband. I was drilling these boards into the dock. Well, the next thing I knew, Brian, in all of my, you know, thinking I was in control, I lost balance. And that next thing I know is grasping for air and fell right into the water. Dunk first into that cold Ontario water. I was not in control any longer. Let me tell you, I was a drowned rat. <laughs> Boy, you know, that's the thing about power tools. You know, it's all fun and games that you turn them on. Wow, Lori, that's a great story. <laughs> You know, we've got a powerful story and a powerful testimonies today. Man, I can't get over that one. I mean, that that takes the uh, the cake about how God was able to take uh, seemingly uh, really tragic situations and turn them around for his good. And uh, you won't want to miss this. Yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing from Jeremy, one of our partners on a Union Gospel Mission today. But before that, listen to Jennifer's story because, uh, you know, she her faith was definitely pushed to the limit. Watch. I just didn't feel well. I couldn't put my finger on one area, like my head hurt or my ankle, it, you know, wasn't anything like that. It just, I just generally didn't feel well. Jennifer Polk had experienced flu-like symptoms for two weeks when her husband Irvin insisted she see a doctor. She was diagnosed with high blood pressure and given medication. But the next day, nausea and a headache sent her to the ER. A few minutes later, the emergency room doctor comes in and he goes, well, I'm gonna do a chest X-ray and a head CT scan just to see what we're looking at. The scan showed swelling on the right side of Jennifer's brain, so her doctor ordered an MRI. The MRI revealed a tumor the size of a small orange. It went from, I'm here for high blood pressure, to it looks like you have some swelling, to you hit the neurosurgeon saying, you have a brain mass and we're gonna do surgery this afternoon at 4.30. It was that fast in 45 minutes. I threw a little mental fit, I guess, and, and I had to get it together. I had to I had to pray to God and ask him for some, some clarity, some bring me together. I was still had to be there for my wife. Uh, Mentally, you know, I had to get there, and to do that, I had to have God. I don't really, I don't freak out about a lot of things, and I guess it, and it was so funny because I absolutely positively knew it was gonna be fine. I was like, God's got this. I knew deep down that he had it. And yes, it, I guess it was just my faith, my defiant faith that he had it. Jennifer underwent surgery for four and a half hours, and a biopsy revealed that she had stage three brain cancer. Because there was a 70% chance a tumor would regrow, her doctors gave her four to six months to live. They recommended chemo and radiation in an attempt to extend her life. A glioblastoma multiforme is a primary uh, brain tumor that is malignant, it is cancerous. Uh, it is usually considered not curable, uh, even at early stage diagnosis. Despite the dire prognosis, Jennifer chose to trust God. If you think my God who created this universe can't whoop some puny old cancer cells, I said, you got another thing coming. He like raised Lazarus from the dead. You think he can't take care of this? Are you serious? I will do chemo and radiation as a precaution. That's the only reason I'm gonna do it. And I said, if those are the tools that God has given me to beat this thing, then that's what we're gonna do. I was frustrated. Uh, I, was, I was really mad. Uh, and that's when, you know, that feeling come on me that I had to, I had to get close to God real fast or everything was gonna get out of control. I had to get that clarity in my mind that he was in control and he had it taken care of. Jennifer stood firm in her belief that God would heal her. She endured chemo and radiation for the next few months with Irvin by her side. And about halfway through the chemo, I had about three or three months left and I looked at him and I said, I'm done, I'm not doing it anymore. I was just so tired of being sick. And he was like, baby, gotta finish. 
and I didn't want to because I was so tired of being sick. And he was like, you got to finish. And I would, but it was awful. It was horrible. There was many days where we cried. There were many days where we laughed and there were many days where we got angry. Uh, but we got through those days together and with the Lord's help. Jennifer's faith was bolstered by the many people praying for her. My mom and my stepdad at their church, everybody they knew was praying. Uh, my whole entire family was praying. Their churches were praying. My Mary Kay family that I had been in for years at that point was praying. I mean, I had consultants and directors all across the United States, all across the world, um, praying for me. The prayer chain was just overwhelming because we, we'd uh, get notifications that, they, hey, you're on our prayer chain. And it was all over the place. One day while resting at home, Jennifer was overcome by an assuring presence. And all of a sudden, it just felt like somebody had laid a big, thick, fluffy, warm blanket on the top of me and just completely covered me with it. It was like the warmest, most comfortable feeling. And all of a sudden, I was so thankful. I can't describe it. And I just knew at that point that it was God saying, I've got you. Jennifer completed the chemo and radiation and has been cancer free for seven years. The Lord, Lord brought her back 100%. Uh, and she was down, let me tell you. And God has gave me the joy of, of seeing her beautiful face every day. And uh, I love her more and more every time I see it. God was 100% part of, of Jennifer's healing. A glioblastoma is a primary brain cancer that can take people's lives, and for her to be here seven years later is a true miracle. I'm sure that everywhere I go, people get tired of hearing my story, but I mean, I go to the nail salon and I tell people that God healed me from brain tumor. It doesn't matter where I go. I go to the bakery, I tell people. I mean, everywhere I go, I feel like I'm still here for a reason, and I think that reason is to tell people that He is still on the throne and He is still working miracles, and I'm sitting here today because He does. Now there is a combination, I'll say a deadly combination, defiant faith as Jennifer described her faith. She was not going to give in to this tumor, this cancer, this sickness. Even when she wanted to quit, her husband said, keep going. It didn't mean that it was easy. But faith is the thing that just drove Jennifer through this difficult journey. And combined with prayer, that prayer chain that literally wrapped the world, there is nothing more deadly than faith and prayer combined together. God loves to give us faith. And our faith grows when we invite other people into our journey. Um, and I think there's one more thing to the combination, faith, prayer, and giving God all the credit, all the glory. That's what I see in Jennifer's story. And that's what Psalm 107 reminds us. Whatever we're going through, not only can God hear our prayer and do a miraculous work, but he, it's important that we give him credit for it. Listen to Psalm 107, starting at verse 1. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Those he redeemed from the hand of the foe, they were hungry and thirsty, and their lives ebbed away. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. And let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. Do you hear in that verse the importance of faith and yet calling out to God in prayer and then giving God all the credit? If you need some faith today, you need some prayer today, give us a call, one 855 759 700 we're here for you.
Well, we are privileged to have Jeremy uh, from Union Gospel Mission out in Vancouver. Jeremy, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to talk to us today. 700 Club Canada is honored to be a partner with your ministry. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm, I'm doing well. Thank you. I'm really happy to be joining you. Well, you know, we'd like to know some of our viewers might not be familiar with Union Gospel Mission and some of the work you do. So if you could just tell us a few things that the Union Gospel Mission does to help the vulnerable in your city, that would be great. Yeah, you bet. Happy to. Um, UGM is all about helping people overcome poverty, homelessness and addiction. And we do that one life at a time. It's about uh, truly uh without discrimination, demonstrating the love of Christ and ensuring that people have hope, have dignity, and they really need that right now during the pandemic more than ever. Absolutely, Jeremy. Can you tell us how are you um, adjusting, maybe pivoting or adapting during the t this COVID-19 season? The pandemic has really changed everything for us. And I know those watching from home understand that the pandemic has impacted their lives in huge ways. We've seen um, incredible impacts on human lives in the downtown east side and around metro vancouver that are almost hard to quantify we saw immediately when the shutdown happened and the pandemic started spreading um, that uh, more people were all of a sudden showing up at our doorstep asking for help we were seeing far more people um, looking for basic things like meals, like shelter. Um, the meals that we served, we had to increase by 30 to 60% initially. Uh, the food hampers for things like single moms and families, we had to uh, increase by four or 500%. And the number of people sleeping rough, sleeping outside um, in hidden places like in camps or in, in, in woods or in alleys, we've actually seen that double since the pandemic uh, initially struck. People lost work, people had fewer places to go, and that was really concerning for us because the homeless were are among the most vulnerable to COVID-19 because many have underlying health conditions, and additionally, they have no place to go to wash their hands, no place to self-isolate, no way to socially distance. If you're homeless, you're in the public all the time, so you're literally at risk all the time. We had this huge confluence of risks uh, converge, and it was really, really difficult. Um, and and still, we're we're uh, struggling, but hopefully, struggling and transforming lives in the midst of that. Wow, that is certainly a good wake-up call to those of us sitting in our comfortable homes, right, during isolation, that there are people on the streets that have so many more things against them in this time. How have you overcome some of these challenges? Yeah, we had to um, basically redesign uh, our programs, uh, implement a pandemic plan. So, for example, we couldn't have hundreds of people congregating inside our building to, to eat meals. So we changed this to a takeout model where uh, where people could come, where we increased the number of meals initially that we could give out. And we did that. Uh, through takeouts. We had to change our personal protective equipment. So staff are often wearing things like this, a mask, and then they're also wearing, in some cases, things like face shields, or in other cases, when they're doing laundry for our guests, they have the option to wear full-on gowns, because we need to make sure we're taking every step uh, to protect those who are most vulnerable. We believe that's what God would have us do. Um, I mean, those are just a few of the many things. Um, but there's also some really incredible things that have happened. This mask that I showed you, this was actually um, hand sewn by volunteers uh, of, of our mask force, we call it, because initially we couldn't get um, enough masks for our staff, so volunteers stepped up to sew those. Um, wow. We've also we, we've also collaborated with other organizations to deliver meals to people's homes, those who have homes, so they don't have to leave and stand in lines looking for food when 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 they're hungry. That's so great, Jeremy. I mean, I feel so encouraged to hear this and how the community's coming together and the ways you're serving. How are you seeing God move in in these difficult and yet uh, you know opportune times? Yeah, I I think that we see that through the human impact, the transformation we've seen. There was a man named Jack who was in our shelter um, 
you know, at the time that the pandemic first really took to taking hold in Canada, he, he recognized that our frontline staff, while others were being told to stay home, our frontline staff were coming to work serving on the front lines of a pandemic. And he said he noticed their open heart. He noticed um, that they were in some ways sacrificing for him. And while he was at the bottom, what he described as the bottom of his life because he was homeless and struggling, he felt that somebody truly cared about, about him. He felt uh, loved and respected and he felt valuable. And I think that is the message for, for people who feel like they're down and out or feel like they're losing hope right now, that God knows where you are. He's sending people to be a, an offer of help even in your deepest, darkest time. And that's where we see, you know, hope and God's love throughout a really difficult, difficult time. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. You know, that is such a good reminder at a time when a lot of the people, a lot of the viewers even feel like, what can I do? I, I know there's people struggling and yet, you know, God is with each one of us and the way that we can contribute, even in this, what might seem the smallest of ways, our presence, um, God can speak to someone through that. Even a smile at a distance can be, an, you know, an important gift to give. As we close here, what's your greatest concern and how can we pray for you? Oh, man, if you could pray for our frontline staff and those who are continuing to serve during a time of great stress. And uh, just our greatest concern is that as things prolong and there might be economic consequences, that we still have the resources to move forward and serve and protect people. And obviously, we're so grateful for your partnership and everything you're doing to make that a reality. Well, we will be praying for you and also are encouraging as viewers and ourselves to give generously to missions like you you're leading out there, Jeremy. God bless you. Union Gospel Mission is one of our loved partners here at 700 Club Canada. So we're praying for you and we will continue to support you generously. Well, up next, we have a great story about uh, a, someone who miraculously survived a fiery explosion. So you don't want to miss that. They told me, when we see burns this bad, we usually have a 24 to 48 hour window and that's it and so they were giving me basically that much hope that it you that's how much time you have to get the family here say goodbye in the summer of 2016 Catherine Stewart's husband Jimmy was enjoying a weekend at their cabin with family and friends outside of Anchorage Alaska little did they know the propane that powers the cabin had been slowly filling the crawl space due to a leaky connection. Late Saturday night, Jimmy went into the crawl space to investigate, when suddenly it exploded. Their son, Stephen, was outside during the blast. I just remember seeing that flash of red where there was the flame, and that's when I heard the kind of rushing wind sound that was accompanied with the explosion and it blew out windows, and it blew a whole wall out and dislodged the whole second story from the first. Jimmy had taken the full force of the fiery explosion and was still alive. Stephen's wife, Anna, remembers the moment Jimmy emerged from the cabin. It was very shocking. He was just completely white. His skin was all white. Um, he had no hair. In an area where they've never had cell service, they miraculously got a call out to 911. As Stephen drove his dad to meet the ambulance, he prayed for his father, who is a pastoral leader with the Alaska Baptist Convention. I remember uh, praying uh, for longevity of, of ministry, that the Lord would sustain his life so that he could continue doing what you've called him to do. In Anchorage, Catherine soon got word that her husband was life flighted to Harborview Medical Center in Seattle due to the severity of his burns. Right away, she called friends to pray. I didn't ask him really so much to do anything as to just pray. Jimmy's been a horrible accident. We need to get the word out. Please pray. And I just told him there's been an explosion at the cabin and he's been life lighted out. Thousands of people from their network of churches and around the world began praying for Jimmy's survival. He was placed on life support and received top medical care. But with third degree burns covering 77% of his body, he was not expected to survive more than a few days. Despite the poor prognosis, Catherine took all their concerns to God in prayer. Every time I, you know, would 
go to the Lord with those things, then I would feel more hope, more hope, more hope. And that strength in me, that hope is strength purely from the Lord. We can't come up with it on our own. It's supernatural, absolutely. I think it was the Lord giving us this peace that we just couldn't understand, that, that didn't really make sense, um, that He was gonna be sovereign over well, the whole experience and, and everything, and he, he had Dad's life in his hand. Nine days after the explosion, he was able to breathe on his own. Several weeks went by and Jimmy clung to life. One night while praying against infection and fear, Catherine had a vision of two angels around his bed. And they were huge, and they were strong and powerful, and they were on guard. And that's what they were doing, watching over Jimmy. And the Lord said to me, not in audible words, but in that picture that he gave me, I got this. You don't have to fear. Catherine hung cards, prayers, and photos around his room and created an atmosphere of praise and worship. Over several months, Jimmy endured surgeries to save his appendages and multiple skin grafts to replace the vast amount of dead skin. With each surgery, doctors warned the family about the risks that could take his life. Be prepared, you know, there could be brain damage. It was all these things. And then they would come back from the surgery and it, it seemed like a 10 out of 10, they would come back and like, well, all the bad things that could have happened didn't. <laughs> and uh, he, he made it through and it was weird, <laughs> but we're glad, you know, we're glad. There's just so many miracles that come on happening. And so each time something would happen and he'd get revived and he'd get better and stronger and come through it, they were just amazed. They began to call him Miracle Man because he just kept on getting better every single time and defying what they expected. The power of prayer um, is so invisible, but it is, it is so undeniable. Six months after surviving the explosion that should have killed him, Jimmy walked out of the hospital with a body full of scars, but also a new opportunity to tell everyone he meets about the loving God who carried him through and the church who prayed for him. People walk up to me all the time and I get to share with them because they say, do you mind sharing your story, what happened? And when I do, I get to talk about the greatness and the goodness of God. This has been the most three meaningful years of my life. And it's just been overwhelming to me to see how God has worked through all this. I have seen the power of God. It didn't shake my faith, it strengthened my faith. Just weeks after being released from the hospital, he was able to walk his daughter down the aisle at her wedding. Jimmy returned to his job with the Alaska Baptist Convention and even plays racquetball competitively. He says God has continued to strengthen him through every challenge he's faced. He's walking with me in the valley of the shadow of death. I don't fear any evil. I don't fear any problems. He is with me. He's going to restore my soul. He's going to lead me beside quiet water. He's going to anoint my head with oil and just heal me and walk with me. God loves us. I want people to know that, and in the midst of their deepest, darkest valley, I want them to trust God. Let God be God. God is good. You know, when you look at Jimmy's life, you recognize that only by the grace of God is he alive. And I love how his son, Stephen, began to pray. And he said, God, he's not finished with his ministry. Please don't take him. And uh, when I heard that, in my spirit, I, I felt that God was saying for you, Colossians 4, 17, finish the work you've received in the Lord. Remember my chains. That's what the apostle Paul said. And you could see the chains of the explosion, the, the, uh, the effects of that, uh, that blast that, that Jimmy was able to survive. And I don't know what you're going through the day, but I've got a good sense in my spirit that you're going to make it. Uh, if you need more prayer, 1-855-759-0700, prayer partners are standing by. And we want to get something into your hands, too. It's called Answer Prayer. It doesn't cost you anything. Uh, it's yours for the asking. Again, 1-855-759-0700. And uh, I believe, just like uh, Catherine saw those big angels, you've got angels surrounding you right now. And I want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, you know the situation, and I pray now, Lord, Romans 8, 28, 
that it would work together for good. What the enemy meant for evil, you meant for good. In Jesus' name, amen. If that's you, say, Pastor B, it's me. We'll be right back after this. I had just come from traveling out of the country. It felt very unusual. I just started thinking, well, I hope I didn't get into contact with someone that was sick. I felt something in my throat. It was blood. I began to panic. I felt death. My head was about to explode, and I said, call 911. This was the worst case that I've seen. From Pat Robertson, do you need a miracle? Available now. Well, Lori, we really have seen over and over the underscored uh, truth that God is in control. You know, something that took my breath away is looking at Jimmy after that explosion and uh, how he doesn't have a bitterness, but he really has a gratitude for who God is and, and not only preserving his life, but he is uh, giving him an opportunity and a platform to help others also in this time of, of great need. Well, I appreciate it too, as well, uh, talking with Jeremy at Union Gospel Mission. And you know, so many of our partners across Canada are in need now. And I don't know about you, Brian, sometimes we feel when we're in isolation, we we aren't, in, what can we do? And maybe you, our viewers are feeling the same way. You're feeling like, how can I help someone? Well, today you can help Union Gospel Mission and all of our partners across Canada by giving to the 700 Club Canada. In fact, we want to give more and more generously in this time, more than ever. So call us 1-855-759-0700. Become a monthly partner with us for $20 a month or your best gift. And you can partner with us to help so many ministries like uh, Union Gospel Mission across Canada. Call us today. Amen. And Lori, as we close, I just want to pray for those frontline workers, but also uh, our partners. Father, we thank you for the gift that you have given us to be, Lord, a beacon of light. And I pray, Lord, the Great Commission is you are blessed to be a blessing. So I pray that blessing upon our viewers today and also our partner ministries. Lord, may you get all the glory in Jesus' name. Well, you know, the Bible says in Joshua 1.9, it says, Be bold, be strong, for the Lord your God is with you. Hold on to that as we leave. We love you. God bless you. Until we see you again. To contact us, phone 1-855-759-0700. You can email us at cba at 700club.ca or write to us at Christian Broadcasting Associates, Incorporated. The 700 Club Canada, P.O. Box 700, Scarborough, Ontario, M1S4T4. You can now like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter or Instagram.